I'm going to show how to download this uh, Google Doc data into Excel and then uh, load it into R uh, for analysis. So I'm now clicking File. Uh, there should be something called Download as Microsoft Excel uh, file. And yes, once once you see all the green, that means it's download has complete at the lower bottom left. And I'm going to right click and say Show in Finder. Yeah, uh, I have downloaded it twice, so. And then I'm going to drag it into a folder. I'm going to analyze it. So this folder will be like five, uh, this one. So, uh, this is uh, the previous version. I'm going to delete it. And then I'm going to, oops, uh, sorry, I lost my uh, file. Uh, let me cut this one. Uh, this one, I have too many windows open. Okay, this is my downloaded file. I'm dragging to here. So I'm going to remove that uh, parenthesis one, rename it. Okay, so that's the Excel file. We can uh, open it just to double check. Okay, so this is basically the, uh, the Google Doc file. Now it's uh, in my own computer. So make sure a second, uh, there's three sheets here. The spring 2014 data, that one we ignore it. The fall 2014 data, this is the summary uh, master sheet for, from all the group. And I expect you cla uh, correct some mistake here. but. For now, let's just go ahead to do the analysis. So there's a separate sheet just for our analysis. I basically copy paste uh, from the, pre the summary data from the master sheet. I basically copy paste, highlight everything here, uh, and then um, copy. Uh, and then to R, I say uh, paste special, paste only values. So that's for the R uh, for the R analysis. So we can analyze this data directly if you have installed the package called XLXX. But sometimes uh, if you use a biology laptop, you cannot install it. So we can use another way called uh, save as in a different format called comma separated value. This comma separated values. It's highlighted on CSV format, and then save us. Uh, it's going to, because the text file only going to save one active spreadsheet, so doesn't matter, uh, save, just continue, and then quit this one. You should see uh, now a file called, uh, 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 the same, with the same name, but now the, uh, the format is the CSV format. And then we can use the left file CSV R uh, if you double click on that. Or if you uh, if you if if you want can right click and open with R Studio. Uh, in my case, I already linked that file with R Studio. So if you do if if that doesn't happen, you right click on that. Say open with choose R Studio. If yours doesn't automatically do this, you can right click on that and try to open with R Studio. So, okay, so once we are inside of R Studio, uh, let me change the font uh, uh, preference, appearance uh, 10, maybe that's better. It's too big for the screen. So. Okay, so. The key step in R and R Studio, you want to make sure you are working at the right directory. So unfortunately, on Mac and Windows, the options are different. So on Mac, uh, it looks like I have to go to Sessions and then say Set Working Directory to the Source File Location. The Source File basically is a file I'm uh, is open 
uh, in my uh, current uh, uh, status. Right, so this is my source file. Let me close my previous file, so make it all clear. So I'm going to say uh, set working directory to my source file. Once I do that, you see at the bottom there, that's my, uh, act this is actually my working directory. So close file, but once, once you download it, you should know where that file is. So once we set the uh, working file, oh, uh, I forgot to mention, you should, this file is available on uh, Moodle. Yeah, so skeleton R code for live file. Uh, um, if I make some change, I will update this one. So you should download from this one. Um, okay. And then, uh, if you want, after you have set your working directory, you want to see whether you, you are in the right directory. So one thing is to list all the files. So once you highlight it and click the wrong, uh, those highlighted code, you hi highlight also the code and click wrong, and you see the result at the bottom uh, left. Those are the results. So those are the files in my current uh, working directory. So we see the Excel format, XLSX format. We also see the CSV format. So use the CSV format if you use the CSV R code. Use the XLSX format if you use the different version. So OK. So then you can read that one into a data frame. So read the CSV, you're going to read that file into a variable called TB. It's very short for table. So we, if you double click on that, you can see it, this is basically like a spreadsheet, but now this is in R. Right? So we can use R to analyze this. And so structure, just look at the data, the TB again. So this one has some uh, string number, optical density for M22, optical density for YPS128, uh, cell density. and. Uh, concentration, that's a hemocytometer count, and CFU, that's the colonial forming unit from the plate counting result, and a percentage of black, which right now it's empty, there's nothing there, so everything there is called NA for not available, that's just a special number in R, say, if there's a missing data, that's called not available. Okay, so head.tb is as to show the first few records. In our case, we have only five, so it actually shows everything. So, okay, so one of the advantages of R is to plot and uh, do numerical analysis. So I'm going to, uh, in one of your uh, uh, lab report, let me see, lab report instruction, where is the lab report? Uh, oh, here. Let me see the lab report requirement. Uh, okay, so one of them, well, you need to explain what is LOH, and then say calculate the CFU, that's your individual group result. Then uh, they plot CFU over the OD, CFU over cell density, or basically cell concentration. So this will be the OD versus the CFU. So actually, uh, we highlight that and then run, and you see the plot on the right panel, that's your plot. Uh, the result is reasonable, although it's not perfectly linear, but it's reasonable. So uh, the main basically gave a title to it. There was this plot, you see the main M22 OD was a CFU on the right hand side. Now you see the title there, so this basically gives a title to it. Uh, LN, I'm not showing a command called LM for that basically linear model for regression analysis. So I, I did a plot first, that's line 14. At line 15, I'm running a linear regression model for optical density from M, uh, OD M22 value versus CFU for M22. So highlight that, I run it. And then I'm going to line uh, 16 is just to display the result of the linear regression result. And the uh, R square is 0 0.6, p-value 0.13. It's not, it's not very good correlation, but it's reasonable. Uh, and app line uh, will put this regression line on the plot. Uh, 
So that's basically the class, the whole class result. In a perfect situation, we shall see uh, R square of uh, closer to one, but this is, well, we, at least we are closer to that. It's 0.6. Uh, P-value is not significant, but we have too few data points. So, but there are some experimental error. Hopefully, after all the group adjusts, you can get a significant p-value. But that's not the point. Uh, the whole point I want to you to at least be familiar with this procedure. Understand what linear regression does, what his LM command does, and how to look at the result. So here, the p-value is here, 0 0.1305, and r squared is 0.58, almost 0 0.6. That's, that's the... Uh, and then we can look at the CFU with the uh, density plot for M22. And look, if you pay attention, I didn't change uh, all the key command. All I change is just a variable. Right? So in this case, I'm, I'm changing the variable from uh, optical density to CFU. And then I, the, the other variable change to concentration. That's all I change. Basically, what I what I did is just copy paste the first uh, four lines here and then change the variable here. So that's the really the advantage of uh, uh, programming work versus the uh, GUI interface work. In GUI interface, you cannot copy your previous action. It's hard to do that. But here, since everything in the text file, I can copy paste. So it's actually much easier once you know how to do computing using code. It's much easier and accurate. That's how, how, how computational person can speed up their work because it's, everything is coded, you can do it much faster than the clear cut point. Okay, so I, I then just run this. That will be the result of a CFU with a cell concentration. So here is actually that's group five. Oh, sorry, that's probably group one. Uh, but anyhow, you see a, a point which is outlier. That means that number doesn't follow the trend. It, it's something is wrong with that point. And that's the point I labeled on the Google Doc sheet. It's outlier. Something is wrong there. So, and so the, but for this one, if you look at the p-value, it's horrible p-value. This not significant at all. The R square is extremely small. So this, this result is not consistent. Something is wrong in this result. Okay, so that's for YPS 120A. Oh, sorry, that's previous result is M22. Now let's look at YPS 120A. Uh, well, this one, not much different, but uh, it's the same thing. <laughs> that's too bad. Uh, well, p value also not the same, but that's not the point. Uh, the whole point is really we need, you are exposed to this data analysis problem. How to improve the procedure, uh, experimental procedure, is just uh, a different matter. Okay, uh, I'll just stop my, okay, I have stopped my